I went to the chemist today and I went just like this. So this is my stitch jumper, most of you have seen before. And also my um, cat mask, which I got in Japan a couple years back. It's come in handy. It's also the mask that I wear to bonsai. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I look cute. Hey, but I suppose I'll take it off so that you can actually see that I'm talking. Um, yeah, no, it's only a two layer mask. But it does the job. Sydney doesn't have a mask, like, requirement at the moment. So I figured to a two-layer, that, that'll do me. And it's cuter than a lot of the stuff that you can get out there. So yay for mask. Um, <clears throat> and I tend to wear this one when I'm actually going places that I'll be around people. Because I also have a one-layer mask, which is um, also kind of fun. But yeah, it goes better with my alternative stuff. But it's only one layer. Anyway, so I went to the chemist today because I needed to get some antihistamines. And so we'll try this one out because I have tried Zyrtec in the past and it just made me drowsy. And some of you might remember that I'm sensitive to, well, I'm sensitive to psychology meds. So like antidepressants and that kind of stuff and had a lot of trouble with that. Um, so I worry now with other drugs, will I have side effects? And yeah, with the Zyrtec, I just got so drowsy and I couldn't really function. So lately I've been using Kids Dimetap, which is this liquid stuff. And you're supposed to use it when you have a cold, but it, it fixes your nose up too. So I've only been having a kid's dose um, because it says it can make you drowsy, but I've never had a problem with it. So um, yeah, and the past week it's, it's worked out fine for me. Um, but <laughs> it's kids medication and there's not a lot left of it. So I went to my doctor the other day and I was like, I'm tired of this hay fever because like I've had it for almost nonstop for like a couple of years now. And um, I think I think I really started to develop hay fever after I moved back home, having lived all the way out west where I guess the air is clearer compared to here closer to the city. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, coming back is when my hay fever started up and it's now at a point, especially like it's it's still technically winter, but the plants think it's spring. So, you know, you can't really argue with plants, can you? And um, yeah, it's gotten to the point where like I'll be blowing my nose, my tissue and oh my God, there's a tiny bit of blood. That's not good. I've been I've been doing this too much. So yeah, that's why I started on the kids Dimetap and then my doctor's like, try this so i will try this it's just claritine um the the uh, loratadine is the stuff that's in it so you know i can get the generic if i feel like but i thought i'll start off with that because the price was almost the same um yeah we'll see how it goes i've taken one i still feel a bit sniffly um it's supposed to last 24 hours and we'll see we'll see if it works for me um, but it did have some like side effects listed and some of them can include drowsiness. So cross fingers, I'm not the unlucky person to get that. And then there were some other things. Shall we go through some of the possible side effects just cause I'm the kind of person who does react to stuff. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So the, the more concerning ones that you should see a doctor or whoever for is hair loss or rapid heart rate. Now my heart rate, <laughs> I'm not the fittest person, so my heart rate tends to be, well, I think most of the time it's okay, but sometimes I feel like it's higher than it should be. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. I mean, I also have things like low blood pressure, which gets a little bit out of hand at times. Um, no, the, the, the less serious but more common ones you can get. Headache, sleepiness, fatigue, fun. Um, dry mouth, nervousness, fidgeting, upset stomach, diarrhea, and dizziness. And like half of this stuff is stuff I experience just <laughs> in a regular day to day, not being healthy, having, you know, whatever leftover bullshit from when I was depressed for so long. I do feel like there's some stuff my body just hasn't recovered after two years of sitting on my bum being depressed. Um, and then whatever, like depression, Especially I had biological depression, which means like lots of brain chemical stuff going on and God knows how it's rewired my brain because there are definitely things that changed. For example, I think I feel more empathy than I used to. I used to not have a lot of empathy. Um, and then just like being able to care a bit more about people, but not a whole lot, just more than I used to, which was almost nothing previously. Anyway, those are my problems. Other things I bought today from the chemist. I got me a new hairbrush. 
I don't know anything about hairbrushes though. They had like a gazillion different ones and I'm just like, let's choose the most normal looking ones. So it's, it's, yeah, because my other hairbrush is starting to, starting to fall apart. Um, and <laughs> with this long tangly hair, I'm surprised it's lasted so long. But like, the, the way the other hairbrush is structured, um, let me just get it for you. Hang on. And yes, there are still bits of my hair in here, so, you know, boo-hoo, that's the reality of having a lot of hair going onto your brush. But, so, I don't know how well you can see on this, but there's a, hmm, no, you can't really. Can you see this wonky bristle, and then there's some bristles that have fallen out? And you see how, like, they're all on this, it's not really a fabric, but it's, it's some kind of rubbery stuff. And they're all connected into that rubbery stuff. So what's happened is a little gash has opened up here and they're all starting to fall out in a line. Um, yeah, so one of the things about this one is they're all just stuck into the plastic or whatever it is itself instead of being on a rubbery base. So hopefully it won't break that way, but then I've had other hairbrushes before and they kind of just pull out from the individual little, little hole bits and that's no fun either. But was reasonably cheap. I don't know what to look for in a hairbrush. I mean, here's the stuff that they're selling it to me on. All hair types, gentle on hair, fights frizz. They all make some kind of claim and some of them were weird shaped and I'm just like, I don't know if any of this is true. How, how could a hairbrush be so complicated? Apparently they are and they've got all these bizarre designs and like, you know, the kinds of, the weird bristles that are like, like all bunched together like, like a broom and it's just like, I don't know that I want to run a broom through my hair, so yeah, I just tried to pick the most normal looking hairbrush, um, and hopefully that, that'll do me okay. And other things I bought! <clears throat> oh, just lip balm, because I go through a lot of it. I, I'm always using lip balm. I'm not addicted to it though. You can get addicted to lip balm where you've used so much that your lips sort of lose the ability to moisturize themselves. There's some stuff that's quite bad for that. But no, it's just like, um, especially in winter, I feel find I need to use it more. And it's just after, after like you've brushed your teeth or, I don't know, used a lot of water around your mouth and that's like taken away all the good stuff. So you need to put it back on, right? I don't remember how this stuff works. A while back, a few years back, I don't remember if I talked about it. Um, I had some really bad mouth ulcers and stuff and around the same time my lips got really dry and I was using like this this stuff that you use for like bee stings and all that. I don't know, like it was just going crazy. It turned out, at least in the first instance that that happened, that it was actually caused by a mouth ulcer thing that I was using. So like I got one mouth ulcer. It was SM, SM30 something gel, I don't know. Uh, I've I've not used it since. SM something gel, 33, 35. Pfft. Usually I remember numbers, but not in this case, not while I'm dressed like this. Uh -huh. um, yeah, no, that, that mouth ulcer stuff. So I put it on one ulcer and it seemed to, like, it, kind of help like when you first put that stuff on it tends to be painful anyway but yeah um no it would actually burn more of my mouth and then like you get a bit on and then your saliva spreads it through your mouth and then it was going down my throat and stuff and then because I was like in so much pain and so on it's like dribbling out the side of my mouth and so it's getting all on my lips this this horrible gel stuff and so like I was just I was a wreck uh -huh. and um yeah that, that oh, I did talk about this this is the time I was like hey guys how good is sepicane I think anyway um that would have been in 2017 maybe and then in 2018 I had something similar with the mouth ulcers but my doctor th tested me for mouth herpes in that case and it turned out not to be that either um none of those tests have ever come back so I think the first one definitely the SM3335 whatever it is gel the second time I don't know what that was about but I had a whole bunch of mouth ulcers and it was horrible one of the times I had to take like steroids maybe it was the first time um because it was just that bad like I, I had so much pain I couldn't eat or drink very easily and they were like if this goes on you're gonna have to go to hospital so I was like right I will try harder I will do all the like sepicane numbing mouthwash stuff and I will try and drink more and steroids and not use that gel the gel that I use now is called medi gel and it's amazing and you can use it as many times you want as you want some of the other stuff that I've tried you do have to like wait 
a couple of hours before you can use it, but often with those mouth ulcers, they hurt pretty soon after. So Medigel, I think you only have to wait like 20 minutes and then you can put it on again and like you can just keep going with that and it's great. Um, and it works, it works quite well without ruining my mouth because around that time I was also heaps paranoid about my voice because I was on, I think that might have been around the time that I was on Endep, which is a tricyclic antidepressant, and I got really bad dry mouth and like dry throat, and then you get this mouse ulcer thing on mouth ulcer thing on top of it. Not mouse ulcer, like I look like a mouse, especially with like even with the cat thing. I think I ended up looking more like a mouse than a cat or a stitch or whatever, whatever this is, because um, I haven't seen the stitch movies. Anyway, um, ah oh, no, uh, mouth ulcers. Um, and dry mouth, and I was having problems with my vocals at the time, and it freaked me out, and, you know, I went to a, a mm, clean singing teacher who's, like, a friend from uni, um, and she sort of helped me about out with that, and yay, it was not permanent, so great, but yeah, no, there's some mouth also things that are just terrible, and let's, let's not go there again. Um, the second time around, I think I actually had, probably had a cold, or I don't know. Who knows why mouth ulcers happen? Like, sometimes, sometimes it's my own fault. Like, I've bitten the side of my mouth, or I've eaten something that I maybe was a bit harsh, or like, you know, if I've had a really hot udon and didn't wait for it to cool down, and then I get, like, little burnt bits in the top of my mouth, and there you go, mouth ulcers, or whatever. Although, maybe those aren't mouth ulcers. Anyway, sometimes, though, they happen in strange places, like, down, down in there... I had one recently and I'm like, no food goes there as far as I know. How did I get a mouth ulcer in this one little spot? I don't know, they just appear. So maybe that maybe I do have some kind of weird little mouth ulcer virus or maybe it's stress. Do I have anything to be stressed about? Well, I suppose I've been stressed about like, well, where am I going? What's the meaning of life? Nothing's working out well. Maybe I've had a bit of that kind of stress. Um... I've been doing a little bit better with that. I like, you know, in the lead up to my birthday, I was feeling more of that sort of bum depression kind of feeling, but I've since like pulled myself out of that and I'm trying to get myself back into crazy land, but it's uh, mixed results at this point. We'll see how I go. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe it's like psychological kind of stuff. Lately though, I'm just feeling low on energy and it's hard to get anything done and hard to concentrate. And like, I do have projects and ideas. It's just like, you know, things I could be doing and I, I'm just always tired and it's hard to be energetic. Um, yeah, no, last Friday was good. This Friday I woke up early, I had breakfast and then I, uh, I gave Hopi his breakfast and I was like, maybe today will be one of those high energy days, but no, I had to go back to bed. And so, yeah, but then I dragged myself out of bed and I was like, okay, I'll go to the chemist because my nose was just giving me the shits and, um, yeah, just just get it get it over with and see if this shit works. How's my nose feeling? So there's still a bit of stuff in there, but it's not too bad. I'm not sneezing, so that that's a good thing. Sneezing while you're wearing a mask <laughs> is um not really fun because you sort of think, gee, I'm sneezing and all the stuff that I'm letting out there is just getting stuck in my mask and I'm like, oh, oh, well, at least I'm not spreading it to whoever, but I don't have COVID, I just have hay fever, really bad hay fever, and if I was going to get tested every time I had a sniffle, I would never, never be doing anything else, I'd just be getting constant tests, wouldn't I? Um, yeah, no, what else happened from my doctor's appointment? So, like, the other easy thing was the lactose thing, and yeah, she's like, well, yeah, you can develop lactose sensitivity later in life, plus you're half Asian, so, um, you know, it's, it's more common in Asians, so something to keep an eye on, maybe I just don't have large glasses of milk anymore, I just have maybe half glasses, because it's not an allergy, it's more like your body can tolerate a certain amount of lactose, and if you go above that, then you have trouble, but if you stay below, you're fine, and if I have a little bit of milk or whatever every day, maybe I can train my body not to freak out about it, and then there were other things I talked about with my doctor, but I feel like those will be videos on their own, there's the politics side of thing, maybe I will like mix that up with like talking about the Malin Baker stuff and also my centrist politics. And we can just get politics done in one video if I can find the time and just sit down and do it. 
um, which is the real problem at the moment, isn't it? And then we also talked about the autism thing and how I probably don't have it. And I went through some of my reasons, which maybe I can do a video on why I'm not autistic, I say as I sit here in a um, <laughs> stitch jumper. I'm, I'm sure sometimes I look autistic, but um, I don't even like, like, I, I did not ask for this. It's just like mum went to Korea, I think, and came back with it and was like, here, have a thing. And I'm like, what is that? I, I don't need that. Um, but she, when I, when I came back from Japan with my wardrobe of black stuff, um, I was like, you know, I had no space for everything. So I was sorting my clothes into stuff I want to keep and stuff I want to give away to charity or if it's bad enough, throw it out. Um, or like some of the stuff, because mum and I are a similar size for some things, um, she took some of my old jumpers and stuff that I don't wear anymore, um, you know, some of those nice things that suit her, uh, and no longer suit me because I've gone to the dark side, she says, while wearing a blue stitch jumper. <laughs> um, yeah, but when I put this in the pile of stuff I didn't want to keep, she's like, no, I got that for you, you have to keep it. So now sometimes I wear it and make her happy because, you know, I'm I'm a good person, right? I'm, I'm not horrible and full of shadows and whatever. Um, we know I'm lying, but that's okay. Anyway, so I've just sort of been rambling and so on. I think Paper Vampire would like a fake ending, but I can't think of a fake ending, so give me a moment to ponder that. Um, and then there was something like, you know, the whole like, share, comment, subscribe, notification bell, give me money, Patreon, listen to my music thing, complain about the algorithm. I'm sure there was something else that I was going to complain about YouTube-wise, and I just can't remember what it is. Like, you know, another thing that a lot of YouTubers are like, my videos aren't doing anything because YouTube does this, and I'm sure I thought of another thing. I just can't, like, I had it in my brain the other day, and then it was gone. Maybe I was watching someone, and it just, it just didn't happen. I don't know. Um... Yeah, I can't think of what it is. Like, I know there's a lot of channels who reach, like, the, the 1,000 subscribers and they're like, why am I not monetized yet? Or, or why don't I have the community tab yet? And uh, I don't think that was it, though. Um, I know I'm not monetized because I don't get enough watch hours. I'm, I'm getting closer. That Alienware video did um, boost me from, like, oh, my God. I think before that I had about... 2,000 something watch hours in the past year and it's now like three and a half thousand watch hours and you need to get up to 4,000 watch hours before they'll consider re-monetizing you. But even if you get up to the 4,000 watch hours, is it 4,000 watch hours? My god, that seems like a lot, doesn't it? Um, even if you get up to that level, they still have to approve you. So if your channel is full of garbage where you're just live streaming a counter or something or you're just live streaming some crap that you've stolen from somewhere they're not gonna monetize you they can look at your channel and be like your shit is <laughs> you didn't make this really you didn't put any effort into it you're just grabbing other crap from somewhere um and then like god help me they look at my channel they're like this chick is just like what even is she doing i don't know maybe they would monetize me but i never really got much from it anyway it's like like a few few bucks here and there. It was never enough. I think you have to reach, I don't know what it is today because I haven't looked into it, but at least when I was monetized, you had to get a certain amount into your account before you were able to withdraw it. I'm not sure if that's just an Aussie thing. Maybe other countries you don't have to, but it's like you have to reach this level before you can withdraw and I never reached that level to withdraw. Although the other problem is when I did have ads, I don't like those ones that are like five seconds and then you can skip it. I just have the little pop-up ones at the bottom, um, <clears throat> which, I guess means you don't get as much money either, but whatever, Patreon's been heaps better because, you know, um, for one thing, you, you actually get a solid amount and you get it straight away and people are supporting you and then you can have your little club where you can share little stuff that you don't really, like you want to get it out there, but you also don't want everyone to see. It's a bit like what I do with my books, right? When I release my poetry books, I don't release them in digital form. Um, I only re release them in the, the paperback form and that's because like, yes, I want that stuff out there, but I don't want just just anyone 
getting it and I don't want it like being shared around and stuff because I'm kind of like insecure and there's a lot of personal stuff and there's so much of my life in it especially like when I was going through that phase of writing so many poems it's like all my life and all my thoughts and all that stuff even though I've disguised things in artistic sort of language you can still sort of figure out some of the things I'm going through and then also um some of it is more explicit, like, you know, up front, not hidden in crazy language. So I just, I still feel insecure about so many of the things that I've been through. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I released it as paperback because then you have to buy something physical and then you have to actually read it like a proper book and more people won't, won't buy it. I know with, like, digital, I could just, like, raise the price to something insane, but, um, I don't want my books in that form. Um, so yeah, no, I really should check whether or not Lulu have gotten their shit together because I like their model more than like other ones that I've looked at. But yeah, they, they changed their website and um, uh, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of places are changing their websites to new versions. Some of you, if you've experienced new Facebook, which I am stuck with, like there's no escape hatch for me. Other people have escape hatches. Other people haven't been pushed on to new Facebook, but I have and I'm stuck there and it's terrible and I hate it. There are so many things that don't function properly and I'm just gonna like, if I can get Zuckerberg and just like shake him, what are you doing? But a lot of these websites are changing and I think it's because of like maybe HTML5 or maybe some kind of underlying internet technology. They don't like the old websites, so they're all moving to new shit. And as far as transitions go, Lulu have handled it the worst because like nothing's working. They didn't have their old website running alongside it. They just moved everything over before the new website had functionality, before it had so much oh my god their facebook page was a mess you should have just been watching it because they'd they give updates but then they'd like delete it every day because there's so many negative comments and you know just make all of us even more mad and then me sitting here with my popcorn going oh my god what a shit show if you want to know how not to transition your website that's a prime example anyway how did i get to that i was talking about youtube and monetization and so on wasn't i oh my goodness no, there's, there's, you don't need to be monetized. Like, I, I don't know if any serious YouTubers watch my shit. But if you do, right, you don't need to rely on YouTube monetization to get by. There are other models. Some people do, like, t-shirts and stuff. So if you're an artist, maybe you can offer that alongside Patreon-type things. If you don't like Patreon, there are other platforms that let you do that stuff. I know Patreon's had all kinds of drama, and I like popcorn for that too. But, you know, I'm already there, and it's easy to watch. So until they collapse, that's where I will be. Ha! Huh. And I really should upload something else. I've, I have been a little bit slack, but on the upside, my Patreon guys are just, like, there for the ride, and I don't have, like, specific, I'm gonna send you this thing this month. Um, I tried doing something like that for a while, but no. Um, yeah, YouTube things. How much more can I drag out this video? I don't know. I think I'm kind of, I'm kind of done with it. Um, mmm, mmm. So do all the, like, I don't know, make me feel good. Put a cookie in the comments or, I don't know, should we have a different emoji to put in the comments every video or would that just get complicated and annoying or, hmm, yeah, I don't know. I'm hungry though, so you could just put like any food related um, emojis in the, in the comments and, you know, we'll pretend that that's sustaining me, shall we? <laughs> Oh man. Anyway, so that's my brief window of filming and I think I need to blow my nose because I don't know how long this shit takes to kick in, but, or maybe it's just the crap that's already left over in my nose, but I can feel it doing the thing. And that that's my morning ramble about me going to the chemist and then going off topic as we tend to do on this channel because I am chaos and yeah, you can't make me stick to one thing. Anyway, so now what am I going to do with my day? I have no idea. Oh, well, we'll just, we'll, we'll figure that out. Um, I guess I'll eat something next, except it's not even lunchtime. Oh my god, it's because I had breakfast early. Um, yeah, well, what do I do with myself? There's still so much time left in the day. Oh, do I have a list of projects? Probably, but then, like, even when I have a to-do list, I'm just like, yeah, but I don't feel like it. Oh, well!